Absolutely. I, I think I definitely think there's some smaller things as well that are affecting Beast Coast. They're, for instance, still experimenting with some small role changes here and there um, and some other stuff too. But we could talk till the end of days about that if we wanted to. Let's focus on the match. First ban going to be Jackal getting knocked out, eliminating some of that anti-roam capabilities that usually goes right over towards the attackers. Won't be so prevalent inside of this matchup. Our second attacker ban following the usual meta trends takes us to what I believe is still our most banned attacker, Thatcher. Yeah, absolutely. He's definitely going to be our most banned attacker as per usual. Uh, defensive bans now coming in for Disrupt. It's going to be the Valkyrie. Haven't seen them remove this one on Chalet just yet. Usually going for the Womai, but feeling something a little bit different this time around. Same for Beast Coast as well. They don't usually prioritize the Jackal, but they do usually prioritize the Mira. as I'm going to go over and just double check my work to make sure. And yes, that is their usual ban. They've banned it two times. This will be their third. So a little bit of a mix up when it comes to some de uh, defensive bands as well as offensive bands. But overall, this is pretty even across the board for Chalet. All right, well, let's get into round one, see what exactly these bands are going to give us in terms of a game. We got the Frost pick coming out immediately on the Bar Gaming Room setup, which shouldn't surprise anyone at this point. But just in case it is, Frost has been increasing in the meta as of late. In fact, I think that got talked about on the uh, the balance uh, patch notes or the talk, the dev talk that was posted earlier today. So she was even brought up in there. So no surprise she's going to be picked up immediately here alongside some of our usual mainstays. And also getting a six pick away uh, from the Rooney here and end up picking up the Mozzie. So this is going to be pretty helpful for them, especially in the info denial and a lot of conversation going on around Mozzie as well recently, most notably his Rooney and that 1.5 scope. Uh, you know, just an amazing weapon that's arguably the best gun in the game currently set up wise, especially for those people with immaculate aim, like uh, multiple people that we have inside of the NAL. So that's why you see it so prominent inside of professional play. But some changes coming up uh, pretty soon that we could see on the test server for some people like, uh, well, Aruni, or actually not, excuse me, Aruni, Alibi, uh, with the MX4 Storm. She might end up getting the 1.5 soon as well, so that could be a pretty interesting fold in the future, especially for sites like this, where we have pre-fires happen pretty often, but that's gonna be enough to uh, chit-chat about that. We're out and onto the field now for Disrupt, as they'll be attacking Games um, Bar initially. Horizontal upstairs setup going to be here. Pretty light extension for Rudy and Anthony on the north side of the building. But we've got our usual bunker deployed, or at least as much of a bunker as they can make it anyway, towards that library as our defenders are going to try to hold that main upstairs hallway for as long as possible and prevent the access for Disrupt. Disrupt has plenty of other ways to work their way in. In fact, they're going to use the EE-1D not only for the intel it gathers, but as the audio mask as well for them to start pushing in. And the frags will follow that just as quickly. One player down for both sides, but now Disrupt pushes the advantage into their own court with the elimination of Fozo. We go to a 4v3. Sippin is low for Beast Coast as well, so the defense not looking too hot, just 45 seconds into the round. Iconic simply holding the hatch upstairs. Good info for Disrupt. They've already taken control of the entirety of the site. The only issue right now, it's gonna don't great. really have access to that case. Do have access to frag grenades still, as they'll deal damage to Anthony Sippin, also taking a blow as well. Not from a nade, though, just some previous damage earlier on. But as of right now, Beast Coast are actually locked out of their own site. Don't even have access to it through the hatches. They've reinforced that, and Disrupt have simply diced them up upstairs. Very difficult for them to try and rotate. Rudy will find a hole, though, and start working his way out towards the far side of the map. Although, J9 and the rest of the squad still holding on inside of the actual bomb site. Somebody's got to pick up this case. Sippin trying to play a little bit closer to the blue stairs, gets caught out by DP Fire on a pre-fire in. So he may not actually have the info yet that he's down that player, but seems he's aware of it. He's keeping Overwatch for a rotate and watching out in the event someone tries to come, another trade out Sippin. Oh! <laughs> or in this case, keep Overwatch to prevent Anthony from leaving the library as he's finally finished off via a nade. Sippin is going to get spotted and now killed. Anthony, probably not too hopeful to be revived, looking at how far away he is from Rudy. And Rudy now left alone in this world in a 1v4, trying his best to survive and see if any other kills can be picked up there. But Anthony just getting finished off upstairs, truly leaves Rudy alone and unfortunately with not much to play for. Jade I know already has the cutoff to kill him as soon as he gets aggressive. That was a beautiful round there from Disrupt. They knew the Rome was going to be coming. They quickly execute onto site and get full control. I mean, I'm pretty sure J9 was in there for a straight two minutes. Mm. A very, very impressive offense so far from Disrupt. Beast Coast simply cannot react. The only thing that they were able to actually get a hold of was the case. We saw how that was going down upstairs with the uh, Mozzie play inside of Library, simply holding it down through the hatch. Uh, but besides that, not too much to call home about for Beast Coast. They're able to rotate out of Library, but besides that, uh, I mean, they're not 
not even really able to get any kills to force their way back into sight. Disrupt simply locked them out of the gates, and there's no further progress made. A slight change of the six pick there for Beast Coast as we'll just switch out the Mozzie towards a Volmai. Not going to cause any major tectonic shift in the way that the round is played. Just that extra little bit of utility mitigation. Considering what went down at the beginning of the last round, that's going to be a pretty smart switch for Beast Coast to prevent any sort of all-in rush. Almost, almost a rush play. You can see they're coming in from Disrupt to at least take their early control, not necessarily to rush straight into the site, but at least to get them what they needed to play out the rest of the round. Really well done there by Disrupt, and a good footing to build off of here on the attacking side of Chalet. Yeah, they were seriously looking to catch some people off guard with that play, like we were talking about previously. I think that the only part of it that didn't go off without a hitch for Disrupt was obviously the man with the case. They end up losing that, and we already talked about how Beast Coast were able to hold on to that for just a little while, but it didn't really matter at the end of the day. We'll see if Disrupt are able to accomplish something similar this time around, although probably not in the same straits, as I'm assuming that this is not going to be a rush through a bunch of laser gates, but we'll have to see. Disrupt out and onto the field now, and they haven't changed up too much. I mean, believe Shuttle with the air jabs is a new thing coming into the storyline for the offense, but besides that, uh, looking pretty straightforward. Still have Iconic rocking the Lion and DP Fire on the Yana. Be a much quieter start to this round overall here. Both teams, a bit of a tepid approach right now. Anthony waiting for the correct opportunity to try to chuck this Nitro out the window. Hasn't gotten it yet, and he probably isn't really going to keep it for very long here now that he's been droned out. Our attackers should expect this play coming in, or rather out the window, but so far still drifting close, presenting that opportunity to Anthony regardless. Not to mention the fact that Anthony is good for at least three grenades to be tossed at him. The ADSs will eat those up. I wouldn't be too surprised to find out if there was another magnet or two hidden somewhere in the room as well for additional mitigation. So this is a tough one for Disrupt to try and crack past right now. And there goes the Nitro. Full kill on the Retro. Massive damage on the DP Fire. They seem to be aware of it, but still are not able to negate it. J90 quickly corrects, though, with another frag pickup against Anthony. Anthony almost eating two frags there as there was another one being primed on the window, but it's not going to matter. They'll at least be able to clear out trophy stairs and possibly get a foothold on Solarium. Psychonic will be working the window, DP Fire opposite, trying to get these crossfires going on. It's actually still DP Fire working the Solarium side oh, instead. Wow, nice Iconic with a beautiful find down through the floorboards into Kitchen. It's actually going to end up taking down the smoke of Sip, and that could be a big pick going into the last minute, but still have to deal with this top hold. It's really Rudy and Fozo up here currently with another EE1D coming in, but no one here to try and capitalize. That's also going to be the last EE1D for Disrupt, so technically stuck between a rock and a hard place for right now is this drone economy kind of stuck in between a good and a bad point. They've lost a handful of them, but DP Fire still having a drone up. Iconic with two, so still have some info to gather around the area, but just have to decide what to do with it, as this could currently go either way. Started out the round with a whole lot of grenade utility as well here for Disrupt, and that is all but gone now. No flashes left to try and burn out any ADSs or magnets that are left. Thankfully, the ADSs won't be a problem. You'll remember, those are all stuck on the Solarium stairs, but those frags could come in handy. Specifically, that one they have, Iconic, okay. won't have use for it now, though. He just pushes his way forward into the inside of the site, takes out Bio, leaves Foza right on the edge, and Rudy attempting a flank, but that's already been spotted out by DP Fire. Good plays once again on the setup from Disrupt. Fozo. Once again, a 1v4 set before the remainder of Beast Coast. A good find as he eliminates DP Fire, trying to come back to the action after picking up that kill on the rotate. Unfortunately, becomes the first victim of Fozo, but now what else can he get done? This is the tough spot. All three of the remaining players on Disrupt are set up to destroy him the moment he pushes in through this doorway. So he's trying to just bleed as much damage as he can. And so far, that strategy was working, at least against the first challenger behind the dining room table. He will ultimately fall, though, giving another round over to our attackers. Wow, con very convincing offense so far from Disrupt, although, as we've been talking about, Coastline usually tending to trend that way. The biggest thing right now, though, is that Beast Coast really can't get anything done on their defenses. Uh, it seems that they're just being very reactive instead of proactive, especially inside of that previous round. The first one obviously being a rush that's a little difficult to try and uh, IGL or call a mid-round adjustment to work your way through. It's kind of, well, did it work? Okay, it did. Did it not work? Okay, it did. And then you move on from there. You kind of just 
just have to pick up the pieces in a round like that. But that previous one, no real adjustments coming through for Beast Coast. They were quite late. They were able to get some pickups on the initial window side for Solarium, but past that, uh, you know, just very hard for them to try and find anything from Disrupt. Fantastic window play for them, and they knew exactly when to rotate off, set up their cutoffs, and start prioritizing site over the Rome game. A little bit of frustration on the cams there for the Beast Coast roster. For those who obviously didn't catch the graphic at the top right, we are in a current tech pause, so give us just a moment here while we look into the issue, and hopefully we'll resume the game with relative quickness. That info to be coming soon, though. However, that gives us a great chance to talk about the way that these first two rounds have broken down so far. That last one specifically, a great start for the defenders on Beast Coast, especially with the way that they were able to waste out a good amount of time and pick up, you know, kind of a kill and a half with that Nitro play coming out. I believe it was from uh, Anthony sitting on the... Uh, Solarium stairwell there. Unfortunately, not able to chain that forward as they only get the one actual kill from it and is immediately translated. So Beast Coast never really getting an opportunity to play with a man advantage inside of that round because they are pretty much immediately traded out, not able to get aggressive for that reason, able to get in the faces of disrupt. So they're still allowed to execute in the exact way that they wanted to, leading to that, you know, that brute force push onto the site once again down in Kitchen. It, it's very reminiscent of the way that uh, teams play, sh uh, not Chalet, excuse me, but um, uh, Consulate very often, right? It, it is a lot of the cutoffs that we see trying to force people back and identifying where uh, certain people are playing. It's something that we've seen a lot uh, recently with how the Sonic set up and some other teams are starting to set up on Consulate with uh, Yeti playing around the admin staircase. You set somebody down low on the teller's window to cut off that angle and start prioritizing the top, just trying to force him into a bad engagement either way, or obviously the latter tossing utility in there like frag grenades, and that's exactly what we saw inside of this setup they end up cutting off both the top end and the bottom end yes the nitro cell is able to procure that frag but then they just start pouring frag grenades into the stairwell there's no ads's to save him or anything of the sort so they're still able to get control of that area and honestly that was the biggest thing for disrupt inside of that round once they got control of trophy they didn't have too much to worry about the angles upstairs especially on the window repels were beautiful not only were they playing that solarium side with dp fire as well as i i believe one other player but they also obviously had the line of iconic across the way playing the master window and making it to where they can't run into the bathroom they can't run into master it's a sheer cutoff for this north side of the map just really really well thought out setups for disrupt so far right, so disrupt choosing to go back over with shuttle over here to bring a little bit more of that active anti-roam onto the table as the nomad pick will come into play here obviously the e1ds were great for iconic but they seem to need his fragging capability a little bit as he's leading the charge on that in a lot of ways right now picking up some important kills despite not being on the physical top of it there those two kills specifically we've seen from him have been very very nice so he's gonna be jumping on the Zofia this round putting him on a roll where he's probably gonna feel a little bit more comfortable just as a fragger not having necessarily support throughout the entirety and save those ee1d charges away from that though once again a very slow start being built up over these first 30 seconds or so disrupt still trying to figure out exactly what the best path forward is going to be and more importantly what exactly beast coast is trying to do with all the free space they have across the map right now an adjustment here for Sip, and he'll now be on the lesion, so we'll see if this is able to slow down any of this offense here for Disrupt. It's going to be sipping on a roam here downstairs, and it's definitely going to assist him in that department. If he's able to get any info off of that sound cue wise it could probably be a pretty big deal. Shuttle, as well as J9, though, now dealing with this basement area. They know that there's at least one player down here, as Shuttle had just gotten shot at. Mute jammers in tow to try and keep these drones out and lock up this offense for an extended period of time. Sippin, as well as the remaining Beast Coast member down low, trying to just hold on to this timer as long as possible, but that means that Disrupt are going to move away and that means biologic needs to respond and nitro's out of the ceiling and dp fire goes down slow start again here for disrupt inside of round three but as you can see from the scoreboard they've had no issues recovering from these just as yet this one might be a little bit of a taller task though a minute and 20 seconds left normally this first player loss has been coming in with at least a little over half the round remaining, so playing off of a deficit from that. Nice nade bounce. Should have been able to deal with the shield there, but not going to be the case. Anthony just backing up for safety regardless. And start to throw out those toxic babes as well to continue holding back our attackers and hopefully being able to drain out enough time to make the next attack inviable. Mute jammer. 
Getting rid of that with the frag grenade is J9, so that'll clear up the wall. We'll be able to finally get those X Kairos to go off and open up another angle that Beast Coast will have to deal with. Disrupt, obviously still worried about the rotate downstairs, covered by shuttle. Still have two members down low as well. Iconic's taking quite a bit of damage playing the master window. That's that previous spot that we saw him playing in the last round. Disrupt still stuck at the door here, though, on Solarium. Retro as well as the sledge of J9 trying to find an answer currently. The deployable shield inside of the closet just too strong as of late and simply cannot deal with it. Anthony finally getting some fire dealt with or sent at him rather as the shield will go down. He's simply locking them out of this closet. Bozo will get a nice pick up here as it's farther back angles now that Disruptor having to deal with. Not expecting Anthony to get aggressive out of the closet either as J9 as he'll get taken down. Bozo with yet another shuttle with one but he's the only one remaining in a one versus five. No timer either. Bozo will finally pick it up with a bearing nine as Beast Coast can simply keep them shut out at the door. Yeah, specifically against the Solarium push there. Beast Coast just hold the line. And unfortunately, with the player down in the early round there for Disrupt, they seemingly did not have the necessary manpower or just did not have the time to be able to try and wrap someone else away and add another angle to that push, meaning that Beast Coast is allowed to put their full attention on that very one-dimensional play from Disrupt and finally get their own first round onto the board here. Will it be an indication of things to come or just possibly a spike in this matchup? We'll figure that out in a second, though, as we're going to be heading down to the basement next next here as disrupt will try to course correct and pick up a third round yeah, that was just a very awkward round there for Disrupt. As you said, they mostly focus on the Solarium offense. We see the initial attempts to look at a possible clear down low, but they don't go for it. Instead, they say, well, once we get the air jab sh uh, set up for shuttle down low, he can more than likely just baby those. He can hold an angle and probably pick up some frags if anyone wants to try and push Solarium, but they didn't account for the amount of feet or, or, or the amount of uh, force coming from the site from Beast Coast. We see this in a multitude of different ways from the deployment shield set back inside of office to the smoke inside of closet these are all things that we can't deal with from the master window that iconic's playing so what do they have to do well they have to actually just try and brute force their way onto site because they didn't clear down inside of the uh, kitchen area which is the only way that they would have had access to any of these members in their current positions they'd have to go down low try and clear out that roam game and use some impacts or frag grenades to try and get rid of the, either the player or those deployable shields other than that you're just going to have to simply burn through all of that utility and we saw how long that took. So attempt number four on the attack coming up here for Disrupt. The large group of players going to try to take north side control again from the initial look, but that could be changing very quickly. We've got Sippin in position outside of the double solarium windows to immediately counter this out if that does indeed come to pass, which looks like it is. We've got a two-man stack looking to gather that control yet again for Disrupt as they'll try to take this as their first staging ground inside of the round yet again. Sippin. Still going to be waiting this out, though, waiting patiently for any drones that might be coming in here over the next few seconds so that he could try to stop them and bring down that drone count. As this is also where, obviously, uh, since this is where the most attackers are stacked, this is probably where the most drones are going to be coming from, too. So a good opportunity for him to knock a couple of those out and bring down the drone economy. You can see that he's got to be careful about his footing. Already some semi-dangerous semi cutoffs being established by the Disrupt camp as they try to get better control over the upstairs. Yeah, it really does feel like they just took Chalet and boiled it down, really. I mean, the map is much better than it used to be, but there's still these very harsh cutoffs throughout the map. Uh, you know, most notably the, the one that everyone knows being Fireplace Hall, that area uh, usually manned with somebody on that balcony simply holding repel. You can hold the downstairs area. You can hold that top floor as well for rotations out towards library balcony. There's just a lot of different things that you can possibly uh, use in that area that can be very helpful for the offense. But either way, Disrupt making some headway but not in the sense of, you know, really anything besides map control. Beast Coast slowly dialing it back towards site. Still have Vigil on Arom, but I'm giving up the area around this. Mostly Big Garage, but that's something that you're expecting the uh, offense to get a hold of. Not necessarily not necessarily an area that you can fight back too easily. Instead, Beast Coast simply holding back inside of Blue, as well as the central area inside of Wine. This is mostly where Bile is more than likely going to stick for uh, the entirety of of the rest of this round they have to continue to try and combat this as disruptor is trying to find an answer to these walls they'll initially get the front side opened up those are going to take a lot of damage as they'll skimper back into blue but they need this cross angle now to make it difficult to play the back side of this area this one frontal assault more than likely won't work for disrupt unless they're able to get some frags 
East Coast continuing to wait it out. Similarly to the last round, they don't need to be aggressive here. They're perfectly fine to bait out the time. They still got a Nitro sitting on Fozo in addition to two impacts, although obviously not going to see those probably used quite aggressively in the fight itself. The patience from Disrupt in this case seems to pan out a little bit better, though. They find Anthony as he's finally overwhelmed, and that opens up an avenue of attack for quite a few members of the Disrupt camp. In fact, a plan opportunity now being presented to them. Will this Nitro stop it? Unfortunately not. It's too deep into the site. Even worse, a frag grenade, and Fozo has no choice but to run right past it to escape it, only to run out of time. Bio and Rudy, the last one. No, oh, never mind. Just Bio, the only ones left in this, as suddenly Disrupt have taken full control of the basement, only starting their take with about 30, 40 seconds on the clock to begin with, but they get it done. Beautiful job by Disrupt yet again. That was so very well done from Disrupt. And that right there, folks, is why people don't tend to go to a wine cellar anymore. I mean, uh, on Old Chalet, it was a fan favorite. I mean, in every single ranked game I ever played on Old Chalet, that was a prioritized bomb site for forever, all the way back to when this map was competitive. Uh, and now that it's back in, it just tends to be one of the worst bomb sites simply because of how you can break down the wine cellar area. Those two walls are very exploitable from the offense. They have some very harsh angles that make it to where you can not get out safely in a lot of different areas so uh you know for beast coast yeah they're able to get the refrag on the man that planted the case but besides that you're in a effective 1v5 for biologic and you're not going to get very far when every angle has already been set up all right well getting into the action once again for round five here we have another operator pick coming out for iconic he's now going to be jumping onto the flores so i believe that will be his third pickup on the inside of this one and well, you guys can go home and pick up those new disrupt skins it looks like we got a new gun skin for the r4c as well as the charm so if you're interested in supporting disrupt as well as the rest of the rainbow six scene be sure to go ahead and check out disrupts as well as all the other great new r6 share skins that were just added into the store Probably the best Disrupt skin that they have released since uh, they started doing their eSports uh, skins. So definitely go check it out, guys. Uh, there's so many beautiful skins for the R4C, but this is definitely one that is up there with that uh, nice gold tint on there. But either way, Disrupt, speaking of which, out and onto the field yet again here. Only 10 seconds off the clock, so we're not too deep into it, folks. Don't worry about it. But a lot to talk about here with Iconic shifting over to Flores and really how the meta has been shifting around this operator. Uh, you know, coming into it, a lot of people kind of questioning really what was the, the path in which we were going to see taken with this, but, you know, it, it's kind of just figured itself out. He just comes down to being one of the operators that just has so much utility, you can, not, you can almost not avoid using him in certain areas, you know, when there's a lot of deployable shields being used and a lot of different other things nowadays that are helping the defense to hold on to these areas. Flores is the man for the job. Having four explosive drones definitely takes the cake for trying to get rid of a lot of utility around the map. Once again, waiting out those early few minutes of the round here as Disrupt has already showed themselves in the first four rounds to be a very, very patient team with respect to the way that they've approached this attacking side. If they have to wait out this first two minutes to be able to take even that inch of control, they're okay to do it because it means they'll gather the appropriate amount of intel on Beast Coast's own setup and normally going off the track record so far, be able to execute upon it. It's not going to stop Beast Coast from trying to get aggressive and trying to stop this though. The focus from Disrupt right now very much on trying to clear out the hole just outside library and it's worked foes has gone down outright bringing us to a 5v4 well as you said disrupt taking their time they're able to get that initial pick and more than likely going to slowly speed things up here as this is seeming like top control for dg simply have one member to worry about but another road's hitting up the library stairs so could possibly have two people to worry about down the line iconic still holding the cutoff on the opposite side here seemingly Still worried about a possible rotate here into the library hall area, but no, Beast Coast simply going to abide by the timer. Don't really want to overextend themselves, especially on that rotate upstairs. It could get them a very influential frag if they're able to find it. But now J9 and the rest of Disrupt will be able to clear out this top floor. It's actually only J9 as they've gotten the sludge upstairs and they've already rotated off. This is more than likely Disrupt starting to set up for this execute. Iconic with a big frag on to Rudy. Him being down means the sludge is more than likely going to be allowed to exist upstairs. DP fire with another frag as Disrupt up five versus two bio trying to get aggressive but retro ready for it and now it's just anthony down low he'll get the kill onto dp fire but obviously that will give up his place and retro will immediately start the case
face plant. This is not looking too hot for Disrupt as Anthony tries to fight his way up main stairs. That 1v4 graphic looking so familiar for Beast Coast right now, and they have to fear it. Anthony doesn't even get close, unfortunately. The moment he goes up the stairs, he is air jabbed into a toxic babe with two players, three players, it looks like, actually spamming him down immediately upon that air jab's detonation. So no hope for him there. We're going to see a timeout come in. I believe it's from Disrupt, actually, which would be kind of surprising considering they've got a very, very confident lead right now. But it looks like that's correct. Yeah, Disrupt going to call for a quick timeout before they jump into the final round of the half. It uh, could be a icing the kicker situation here, John. I don't know. Maybe really they just ice, but yeah, right. I mean, hey, you know, m maybe they see this as an opportunity to kind of chit chat about how this half went and what they think is going to happen for their defensive rounds. You never really know. I mean, it is their timeout to use at their leisure, but uh, still fun to kind of look into and see what we exactly see. Insights are always a good, uh, good time. But either way, disrupt. Uh, end up with that timeout and. Uh, as of right now, I mean, as you said, there's no real reason to do so. Uh, we have a change like, up inside like of the easily, lineup again, but like besides that, easily definitely had something to say here from the looks of things. Like he <laughs> very much wanted to bring input, so it's looking like they definitely wanted to get a message out of some kind from him to the rest of the team, and that was probably the main reason behind going for this pause. Either way, should be concluding in the next 10 seconds, and then we'll jump right back into the action. See if Beast Coast can get themselves a second round on the board. We are going to be going to Kitchen and Dining, uh, which is the only other place they've been able to pick up a site so far. So hopes are high. Beast Coast fans out there that this may finally be their second point going onto the board just before the team's flip sides. Okay, I'm low-key hoping for a six pick here. Are we going to get it? No, we're not. Looks like Bio wants to stick onto the dock. It just, I don't know, very strange adjustments here for Beast Coast. The, the one round that they're able to actually win up against Disrupt is simply based off of utility and Disrupt not uh, really taking control of the map in the way that they needed to that round, but that's not necessarily their fault. Obviously, a lot of utility inside of the basement, inside of uh, round two or round three, uh, it just made it difficult for them to try and clear out their area, and they just didn't necessarily want the headache. But now Beast Coast come back to this. They're, they come back to Kitchen at a minimum and their change up is bio onto doc which isn't necessarily the worst thing in the world but when it comes down to it he really isn't a utility based operator he's somebody that you're going to go try and take some gunfights with might try and get an early pick or something like that but besides that not too much to call home about they do have some other things to be able to obviously assist in that matter though when it does come down to utility we saw Sidman be uh, very effective from that master closet position previously as well as Rudy and Toe to assist with that and Bozo on top with the laser gates so we'll see if they're able to try and slow down disrupt here and if possibly bio can find some impactful frags on this dock. See if that'll be the case. Possibly adding that little bit of aggression might be what Beast Coast is going for here. I mean, look at the stats right now with regards to the kill department. And unfortunately, there isn't much there for Beast Coast. Two players are rocking a donut right now. So maybe hoping that with this dock, they can at very minimum take those chances on a few gunfights. While on the offshoot, they may not immediately go their way. They'll at least have the capability to reboost themselves back up to full HP and go for a second attempt, assumably with a health advantage at that point. So it could just be a simple numbers game and trying to correct the way that fights are being taken. I'm not entirely sure if it's going to work, but we'll see if that'll be the case. This disrupt, they're starting to throw that aggression over towards the Solarium staircase yet again. In fact, it's looking like they want to overwhelm this player completely with utility. Anthony's still safe for now, but has taken some heat in this grenade. No, knock it. That one will be the finishing blow as at least three out of the four frag grenades that disrupt brought. In fact, I think all four were used there to try and take out Anthony on the staircase. It was a simple recognition of the clear that they had the last time. They knew that Anthony was going to be playing in this position, and they simply just burn it so early on. Almost able to get that done by the two-minute marker. So amazing early does, round um, stuff here from Disrupt. It does look like the dock stims were used in that play, too, because Bios used two of those since the beginning of the round, so there's a good possibility they were trying to stim Anthony back up to keep him there. <laughs> just, like, this is the most MMO thing ever. Yeah. Let's just try and overheal like the man, damage. It's this game for bio <laughs> like, here yeah and it's it's harsh especially because like i i understand the adjustment to try and overheal but a frag grenade that's it has the red indicator you're dead no matter yep. what yeah so i mean like i hey great on you guys for trying to put some brain power to it but that wasn't necessarily the move either way some big picks happening across the board beast coast losing a lot of members now down to 4v2 in favor of disrupt as Fozo actually still having a hold on this top floor as an opportunity here no longer having a cutoff on the window either as iconic has abandoned his post Looks 
looks like we only have a lone disrupt member up top that's currently droning. I'll the, the only bomb. member right now inside of the actual bomb site. Besides that, it's disrupt trying to find out where these members are. You can see J9 still worried about someone possibly being around any corner, and he damn well should be because he definitely can be. Bio will finally get found out by the hologram. I don't know if we won't see a swing just yet. We will see an EE1D come out and still get recognized behind the B-bomb. Chassis tries to pre-fire, but J9 just that much better in this situation. It's all down to Fozo from this top floor control. Can he do anything with it? I don't believe he has any means to try and stop this from going down. And all it takes is him simply dropping into the stairwell of Solarium. And he's quickly diced up with some lead and disrupt lead 5-1. 1v4 clutch attempt going bad, unfortunately, is very much the name of the game for Beast Coast's end, end round situations throughout that first half. There's so many times where they are just slowly whittled down one by one to a single player, and that last round was no exception to it. The constant attempts to adjust their operators as well on the Beast Coast side in order to make up the difference, including, I believe, that dock pick coming in at the end of the half, but all of it was for naught, as they're only able to get that singular round up on the board. Time to see if they can make any kind of rebound in the second half, or if we're going to look at disrupt domination in their matchup today. Yeah, I just wanted to go and double check really quickly. Dock stem pistols give you 40 HP per shot. So, in, you know, in between reloads and things like that, yeah, you're going to be able to heal up your, your player pretty well. But again, going back to how, you know, frag grenades oh, work, yeah, yeah. it's just, it's going to be very difficult for them to try and burn through that. So, you know, or, or try and overheal through that, excuse me. So for Beast Coast, you know, it just feels like they really needed a different strategy overall as to how they wanted to hold that. I don't think necessarily going back to the same thing and trying it all over again with a minor change just to bringing Doc and trying to overheal was necessarily. Yeah the play but that's neither here nor there that's something to go back and try and figure out later but that just really seemed like kind of the cap to their half overall they're able to get the one round based off of the utility usage but past that disrupt just simply waltz over beast coast on their offensive side let's see if bc can try and bring it back on their offense they're going to be changing up a lot of things as opposed to what disrupt we're doing yes they'll still have the yana and the air jabs of nomad but besides that we're looking different across the entirety of this board yeah, I wouldn't even say the dock pick was like the main thing they were looking to change inside of that round. Just one small detail in the overall scope of that round. It definitely seemed like they were trying to get more aggressive against that Solarium window push, but just no easy capability to make it work, it seems, as uh, you made a very good point here. The early round for Beast Coast uh, just not panning out very well in most situations here, leaving them with those 1v4 or whatever the situation may have been. Clutches time after time again disrupt. Definitely feeling good about themselves as they move on to the defensive half. And so far, some good delay in the first minute or so that's been played out in this second half. We've got a long way to go before we reach the end point of this round here. And a long way to go before Beast Coast have reached the end of this attack strap book. Also, some really big change-ups in what Beast Coast are doing for their offense. Is Rudy on hard breach now instead of Anthony. So... Have an opportunity here for Anthony to find more frags, but Rudy just seemingly can't get it done inside of the frag department right now as he's 0 6 and 1. So, hoping to see him pick it up as well as sipping on this offensive side. Definitely in the driver's seat when it comes to Chalet. So, opportunity is more than likely going to be a lot more bountiful uh, when it comes to playing on this half. Either way, though, about halfway through this round, and not too much action happening across the board. Some drones being lost, and this, that, and the third. But besides that, DP Fire still able to hold on to Library Balcony. And this is the priority for the defense as of right now. This is going to be games and bar. Uh, they're just going to continue to try and clear out utility up top, at least for Beast Coast's sake. They need to try and get through these laser gates and attempt to clear out DP fire. But this could be quite difficult depending on who Beast Coast do it. Right now, it seems like they're very, very focused on just coming in from this north side. No real focus on the library windows. Even if DP Fire goes down right now, his job for the most part has been done. Yeah. This is a time waste position more than anything else. So going down to less than a minute while still maintaining the position with a full breadth of utility as well. On top of the fact you've now got Iconic putting pressure on the blue stairs. This is a one round regardless with regards to DP Fire's specific role here. So whatever happens at this point forward is a little concern to him. Shuttle gets the first pick though against Fozo and DP Fire still here to hold regardless of the fact but he's only supposed to sit here for time wasting. He will get traded out just a moment later by Rudy. And that brings us into a 4v3 with only 25 seconds left. Beast Coast are rushing for any sort of advantage they might be able to get here to try and get into the site. A little bit of pressure going to come against Iconic inside a mudroom, but he should know how to handle this. More importantly, should be able to get 
some proficient pickups with only that 15 seconds left. And there it is. Takes down Biologic without too much of an issue. Rudy's sitting here trying to suss out the players behind the broken wall, but he's just not going to be able to get it done. Retro and Shuttle rush back in to shut down the remaining remnants of the attack and pick up the map point. The pre-map point, I guess, but either way. I mean, either way. I mean, we'll, 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 I'll be honest. I'll be honest. It's probably right around the corner. Uh, the Beast Coast, it's just it's just such slow, slow-moving offense right now. They're not really getting any insight and making an adjustment off of that. They're just kind of slowly progressing through the map, trying to use all of the drones that they can to get some insight. But it's just such low time. I mean, their initial, like, touch, their official, their, uh, official first contact inside of that round happened at 56 seconds. That is way too low on your offense. You need to at least be doing something to someone halfway through the round. Like there has to be, you know, minorly inconveniencing someone would be the best way to put it. You have to do something to the defense. Uh, otherwise, you're more than likely going to lose that round unless something just snowballs. You know, you find a frag. You also get the guy trying to refrag. And all of a sudden, it's a 5v3 or something like that. But I mean, we're talking Beast Coast are trying to execute onto site without library being cleared, simply trying to slap a, a case down right inside of game's window the, the site isn't even clear john they're not even using their utility mm. to try and be again what I, what I was talking about earlier inside of that round beast coast are clearing from the north side towards the south side pushing in through library hall and trying to deal with the balcony all without anyone working the library window that's one of the main priorities that we see and one of the reasons that we don't see thermite brought that often on this map yeah we see him every once in a while but mostly we see ace and habana as priority why because you need that hard breach from range to deal with positions like dp fires on library balcony he's gonna be brought back in again for what very well could be the final round of this matchup different site obviously for disrupt the play style is gonna be somewhat similar just a different focus still gonna have the extended game going on upstairs with a very heavy focus on it but the delay will be centered much more towards library and solarium compared to being a much more singular focus on library in the last round shuttle is once again going to be the man looking to stop things with the play in solarium but it apparently seems like retro is gonna get the first bit of action iconic nearly losing his life as well all this seems to be going on in the basement as retro was found out iconic i assume tries to go for the trade but realizing it's now 4v5 it's going to be a better decision for him to fall back and play more passively very interesting so retro gets taken wow, down obviously the frost mat still deployed so we could see someone step into a welcome mat later on but this is the first time we're going to see beast coast with a definitive lead here so Obviously, some good things coming up. Shuttle, oh, shuttle. shuttle. Is this going to be two? No! He actually gets gunned by Anthony on the swing in. Here's him stand up. Is able to procure the frag. Nicely done for Beast Coast as they finally shot ahead here. Five versus three now for them as they're continuing to deal damage to Iconic. Down to a single bullet's worth of HP as they've been locked up. Not even halfway through this round. Sipping now on to a double kill. And this round in particular looking like a completely different Beast Coast. So there we go. Some great stuff coming out of Beast Coast. Although still some issues popping up for them. DP Fire peeking out on the balcony window. Taking down one of them. But Still only leaving things into a 2v4. DP fires heavy focus onto him as he's nearly taken down by one of the Beast Coast members on Repel. So he can't really get that aggressive anymore with only 26 HP. Anthony pushing forward ultimately to serve Rudy's push though. And Fozo cleans up the last kill a few seconds later. That's a great round being played from Beast Coast. Hopefully a sign of things to come still in this matchup. My only question is what the hell happened in Garage? What, what yeah, happened down we, there? We're missing that very important bit of intel as to like how things got started because that's all that's all very relevant to the end of the round. And of course, yes. least, it just kind of happened. So, so I don't know if that was also in the basement with Iconic or if uh, that was happening in a completely detached scenario. But uh, Yeah, I don't necessarily know. The only thing that I could possibly think it could be is if they possibly went for like a rush out of garage with an impact from uh, from uh, Legion to try and get him outside and like take a gunfight with a 1.5 or exactly. something like that. Uh, but th they've changed up the way that this map spawns overall. So you can't even necessarily do that anymore. I don't even think that there really is a nice spawn kill over there on that side of garage. So just interesting to see that go down in that way. But either way, Beast Coast are still alive in this and that's the biggest deal about it. Uh, even though they're able to find that first initial frag, they're still able to continue 
to find really big kills, especially on site that just made a walk in the park when it came to actually getting in. So really, really well done from Beast Coast, especially around the Solarium area. I really thought Shuttle was getting away with that one. Yeah, that's not to say that Beast Coast are out of the hot water just yet. This is still going to be a rough comeback as even with that one picked up, they need four more rounds and they can't drop a single one along the way. But still, a promising beginning based on the way they played in that last round. If we can see anything close to what we just saw there throughout the rest of these rounds, they've got a pretty good chance of probably trying to bring this close at least to that overtime comeback. It would be six to six. Slow start again though at the beginning of our next round. Beast Coast going to put a lot of priority over towards library and this would be a great choice. Disrupt doesn't have a lot of defenses set up here on this round so they are going to be able to walk in and grab that control for free. Now move to any other part of this building, they'll run into the immediate resistance from Disrupt and that's the part of the round we're starting to encroach on now. Beast Coast doing a very good job of slicing up the map here. It looks like they just want to cut it right down the middle. So they hold onto this kitchen hallway and try and get some control over B. The only issue with this plan is obviously what can go on vertically. As, well, usually for the defense, they prioritize holding on to office, and this is not going to be any different when it comes to round nine. As for Anthony, though, he's pushing forward with the hologram. We'll get a little insight as to what's going on upstairs at J9 with a cross angle here to try and assist with that library hallway. A very nice setup here from Disrupt. Definitely going to be a tough thing to crack here for Beast Coast as these drones continue to go by the wayside. Rudy, though, with some intuition of his own, he'll be able to attempt to get rid of a little bit of this utility. He'll initially get some holes made for the actual office wall, making it a lot harder for J9 to try and play in this area safely. So he's going to choose to back off instead, but Beast Coast still locked up out here as they have not been able to actually get rid of the Electro Claw holding the wall closed. J9 not along in that back play towards the Solarium either. We can see two additional members of the squad that are here to assist just across the way. He's got J9 O and one additional player also in the neighborhood if the need should arise. Not to mention the possibility of rotates to come from any one of the staircases too that could get in the way of this play from Beast Coast. Beast Coast needs to be careful so as they don't get tripped up and waste a bunch of time yet again on the default setup from Disrupt. That's what caused them a loss on their first attacking round and very well could end the game if they're not careful about it. Sippin though is going to anything but careful as he is dip ducking and dodging his way into a kill ultimately though to be traded out just a few moments later but that advantage will not stick there's too much pressure on solarium jane i know cannot keep himself alive iconic adds another one but so do anthony and sippin and just like that the frags continue now into a 3v2 currently favored to the attackers Wasted quite a bit of time here. Still extremely doable for Retro and Iconic, especially since Retro still has so many of these toxic smokes. Beast Coast need to find an answer here, but the issue is they don't have any hard breach, and I believe the kitchen hatch is locked, so they'll have to funnel in through a staircase. They're still trying to find any frag they can. Oh, the oh, so yellow close. pinks coming out. They can see the positioning of the smoke, but they can't deal with it as of right now. Retro, he's been read out, so this gunfight more than likely going to be quite dangerous for him, but the deployable shield is going to give him enough information. He's steps up to the plate. The swing is coming back and forth as Retro trying to hold down the door. Iconic oh, gets the other three. two and it locks it up. Disrupt Gaming get away with the bag as the offense is finally starting to come together for Beast Coast, but it was too little too late. 7-2 for DG on Chalet. A sign of light it seemed for the Beast Coast camp in that second to last round, but it was just a flash in the pan. Disrupt, dominate and close things down. A relatively quick fashion here. 7-2 is going to be the final scoreboard with some great play coming out from J9 O, DP Fire Iconic, and let's be honest, pretty much the entire roster on Disrupt closing in on the 10 kill margin there and doing a pretty fantastic job of shutting down the play from Beast Coast. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Retro getting the short end of the siege stick, we'll just say that. Yeah, Somebody's I mean, got to die for the cause, some, yes. right? That's what we always say. So <laughs> somebody's got to do it, and it just